It's that stage of the day where I'm trying to beat the rain because it's getting dark and I'm losing my light. Oh, weather. Well, hey there, reader friends. I'm Erica and welcome back to my channel. And I apologize in advance for my voice. The air quality is not good where I live and I just am, I've got congestion happening. I don't know why I'm not sick, but it's making me sound all husky and like this. Today I'm going to be doing a tag for you guys. I am going to be doing a tag whose name I just forgot. Guys, I'm on vacation mode. Today I'm going to be doing the last 10 book tag, which was created by Mark Nash, and I was tagged by Samantha over at Samantha Reading. Thank you for the tag, Samantha. Thanks so much. Let's just go ahead and get started. Number one. The last book you didn't finish. I am perpetually stuck reading The Fiery Cross by Dana Gabaldon. I have been reading this for like three years and I just keep restarting because I get distracted by other things and then I forget what was happening. Although nothing seems to happen in this book. I am struggling guys. Send help, send help. Number two, the last book you reread. The last book I reread was For a Fairy Telethon and it's buried under all the other books. Here it is. And that is Scarlet by Marissa Meyer, which I gave five stars. It's my favorite of the uh, Lunar Chronicles books that I've read so far, although I've only read two of them, so that's not saying much. I just love this book so much. You can go to my Fairy Telethon wrap up once I post it, if I haven't posted it already, and see a more detailed review. But basically, Scarlet and Wolf are bae, and I just love them, and I don't know if I used bae properly, but they are my OTP when it comes to this series. I doubt anything is gonna supplant them. I love this book. Number three, the last book you bought. I am a library user. I do not buy a lot of books, so I don't know what to say. I have bought some books recently, but they're gifts, and I don't want to uh, spoil the surprise for the people that I bought the books for, so I'm not going to say that. So I guess if that's the case, we got to go all the way back to May, and the last book that I bought <laughs> was A uh, Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Maas which I actually enjoyed for what it was. It was a nice little fluffy read. It was great to read while I was in the midst of moving. So yeah, that's the last book I bought for myself. Number four, the last book you said you read but you didn't. I don't do that. I don't think I've done that since college. If I haven't read a book, I just tell people I haven't read it. Like, I feel like once you're out of the scholarly world, there's no need to say I read this book when you didn't. Like, no one's gonna quiz you on it. It's okay. If you didn't read the book, that's fine. There are times where I've been kind of like hesitant to say I haven't read the book. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, guys. I haven't read it yet. But in general, if I haven't read a book, I just don't tell, I just say I haven't read this book yet. I haven't read it. Number five, the last book you wrote in the margins of. I don't write in the margins of the books I read as much as I used to. Um, when I was in college, uh, it was actually required that you write in the margins of your book. It's called marginalia. And I liked it. I do enjoy doing it. But now I don't do it as much, mainly because most of the books I read are library books and don't write in your library books, guys. Just don't do it. Even pencil, don't. Just don't. Just don't. But one book I consistently write in the margins of is this one. The Norton Anthology of English Literature, Romantic Period, bunch of poems. Um, this is actually part of my therapy practice uh, to help get my brain out of work mode and into relax mode and stop obsessing over things that I do at work. Uh, so I pick a poem and I write about it, or write on it. I do a lot. I do a lot. I'm like, there, I've actually done the meter of the entire poem. Hey, <laughs> good on me. Good on me, guys. I find it really relaxing, actually, to do expositionary, you know, practices, which is basically when you write in the margins and analyze the poem as you read it. Uh, I find it relaxing. I find it relaxing. I'm a nerd. What can I say? Number six, the last book you had signed. I don't have very many signed books. Not very many big name authors come to where I live, uh, which I'm frustrated by. But one gift I got for Christmas a couple years ago that I am in love with is a signed copy of Diana Gabaldon's Voyager, which is my favorite book in the Outlander series of the books that I've read so far. I love Voyager so much, and I love the TV show so much, and this is, oops, there's a note from my dad 
I find weird bookmarks, guys. I'm that person who grabs whatever's handy to be a bookmark. I've gotten better about it because I've discovered so many great bookmark shops on Etsy recently because of booktube. But like, this is my dad's handwriting. And I have no idea, something to do with the old van. Who knows? Who knows? It's signed right there. It's not personalized or anything, but I don't really care. I like that it's signed and it's my favorite and I love it very much. If you're curious, my parents bought this book from The Poisoned Pen, which is a local indie bookshop, bookshop, <laughs> and it's in, I think it's in Arizona. It's near where Diana lives and she randomly goes in sometimes and just signs a whole bunch of their books. She also at the holiday season time sends them a bunch of her books signed and they are really nice. I highly recommend um, if you're looking for a signed copy and you're not interested in going to a book signing or there aren't any near you, like me, then I recommend going to this bookshop because A, we should support, you know, smaller bookshops in the wake of all the things like Amazon. And also, I just want to support the bookshop that Diana likes because, you know, then I feel like I'm still supporting Diana. So yeah, Poison Pen. I'll leave a link to their uh, website down below. Number seven, the last book you lost. I don't really lose books. Um, they tend to just get packed away and I don't know where I packed them. So if I'm looking for a book that I can't find, I just have to dig through boxes and eventually it turns up. But I don't tend to lose books, really. Number eight, the last book you had to replace. I tend to not mind if my books are a little rough around their edges. I mean, look at this one. It's literally falling apart at the seams. I kind of like it when they look loved and read, um, so I don't tend to replace books based on condition very often, unless it's got like, you know, mold or things like that. Here's one that I need to replace. This is from several years ago when my grandma's basement flooded and my copy of The Color Purple that was all annotated from college got soaked. So I need a new copy of The Color Purple. I gotta get that at some point because it's one of my favorite books. So yeah. Number nine, the last book you had an argument over. I don't tend to argue with people about books because I think that everybody's entitled to their own opinion and every book their reader and yeah. So I don't tend to argue with people about books. I do argue when people dismiss readers of books. So uh, when someone dismisses the teenage girls that loved Twilight, because I was one of those teenage girls, but also like you can totally tear apart the literature, that's fine, but leave the readers alone leave the readers alone. So that's probably the only time I get in real arguments about books is when I'm defending pop literature to English snobs or to judgmental people and just like, you know, don't judge readers, guys. Let them read the books they like. There's nothing wrong with that. Number 10, the last book you couldn't get a hold of. I have two books for this. Um, and part of the reason I couldn't get a hold of them is because like I said before, I don't tend to buy books. I wait for them to come from the library and sometimes processing takes forever and then you don't have your books and you're sitting there looking at the status of it and it says processing or it says available soon and you're like, but the book came out a week ago and I want it now. Disclaimer guys, this is just the nature of libraries. I'm not complaining about my library. I'm not saying they're not doing their job properly. It's just sometimes irritating when you're just waiting so desperately for that book, but it's the nature of using libraries and I didn't have to pay for the books, so I'm not gonna complain that much. So the first book I had to wait forever for uh, was this one, The Orca Scientist, which is uh, the newest book in the Scientists in the Field series. It's a juvenile literature, juvenile nonfiction series, and it's about killer whales! And I haven't read it yet. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. Look at this whale. Oh, look, see, it has all the parts. All the parts are clearly labeled. I love it. There's a fluke. Okay, we're not going to go over all of that because you guys aren't interested, but I get really excited by this kind of stuff and I was just waiting impatiently because if there's a book about orca whales, I have to read it. I have to read it now. I have to read it now. I have to read it now. I only have a minor major obsession with this animal. It is my favorite animal of all time. My favorite animal of all time. The other book I had, a similar instance where I was waiting forever for it to arrive from the library, is this one, Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. Again, it was just a brand new book and had to be processed and it took time, but I was impatient and waiting forever and I just couldn't get it. And like all the e-versions, there were holes on them already. And so it was intense. I was waiting. I was very impatient. So that's it. That's the last 10 books book tag. The last 10 books book tag. The last 10 books book tag. Yes. It doesn't have a question to tag people, but I am going to go ahead and tag some of my booktube friends. I am going to tag April at April with Books. 
I'm going to tag Edshara because I haven't tagged her in a while. Hi Edshara, I haven't disappeared. I'm still watching your videos. Sorry. Hope everything's okay with you and good with you. And I am going to tag, I'm going to tag Michaela at my book self because I don't think she's done this tag and I would be really curious because she doesn't pull her punches when it comes to books and I really enjoy that. If you have any comments or any books you'd like to talk about, be sure to leave them down below. Subscribe if you'd like to and I will see you next time. And I beat the rain. Yay. Bye guys. I don't know what number we're on guys. Number six, maybe. Ooh, we are on number six. Yay for me.